Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have my July mid-month wrap up for you. I'm going to be talking about the 11 books and one book I DNF'd so far in July. And we're going to be going in the order that I read them, so chronologically. So yeah, I have 11 books to talk about today and very briefly one DNF. I literally got into like two chapters and I was like, no. Um, okay, so let's start out with the first two books because they're rereads for me. This is Romancing the Duke and this one is C.S. the Marquess by Tessa Dare, the first two books in the Castles Ever After series. This was for the Summer of Tessa Dare live show that we had. We had this one, I think on like July 2nd. I'll link it down below if you have not seen it yet, but the five of us, B, Rachel, Tiff, Samantha and I, we all talked about these two books, which are the first two books in the Castles Ever After series. This one is Force Proximity, a hero who is blind and a heroine who they both think they own the same castle. So they're trying to figure out who owns this castle. Very much being the beast gothic vibes. And then this one is I'm engaged to your brother. And he's also an like underground fighter as well. Um, I gave both of these books five stars upon reread. I love this series. I of course have a few books on this list today in this video today that have disability representation because it is Disability Pride Month. So I decided to pick up Would You Rather by Allison Ashley. The audiobook was available to me on Libby and I was like, why the heck not? Let's do it. This is the marriage of convenience romance between two best friends, Mia and Noah. They've been best friends for quite a long time, ever since they were kids. And even as adults, they even work at the same company. However, Mia gets the opportunity to go back to college after she has been sick and she has to quit her job in order to be a full-time student. Like me, Mia got really sick in college. She has a chronic kidney disease and she had to drop. I very fortunately got to go back to school when I started feeling a little bit better, but Mia ended up not being able to. She was very ill. And so she gets this scholarship opportunity to go back to college and she sees this as the perfect opportunity to finally go chase the dream that she's always wanted to. I think she wants to become a a nutritionist if I'm not mistaken. But if she quits her job in order to become a full-time student, she loses her health care, which is needed to get all the meds she needs and infusions she needs to live. So Noah, her best friend, proposes a very bizarre <laughs> idea to get married so that she can be on his insurance. Thus starts their forced proximity, marriage of convenience, basically like fake marriage romance. I really enjoyed this audiobook. I was very sucked in. I couldn't put it down. I just wanted to know what happened. And I also loved the chronic illness representation. I thought it was whew, so well done. I would not be surprised if this is own voices. I don't know if it's own voices, but it was done very well. And I also loved how smitten Noah was with Mia. Like he was absolutely smitten for this woman. I personally just did not care for the conflict points of this book. The villain felt very mustache twirly to me, <laughs> you know, like very caricature villain, which as y'all know, are not my favorite. Also, as somebody who is chronically ill, there were just some things in here that um, I'm kind of a little bit tired of. I just personally and kind of over the character being like, I can't be with you because I don't want to be a burden to you. Yes, I have felt that way before, but like, I'm just, I don't really want to read about it honestly in a romance book and that be the point of conflict between the two characters. I'm just not really able to connect with it all that much. And I'm kind of over the chronic illness disability trope or plot line, if you will, um, where someone needs to marry somebody or fake date somebody or whatever in order to get on their insurance. There is two warnings in here for hospitals, chronic illnesses, death of a loved one in the past and grief. The representation in here again is chronic kidney disease. I ended up giving this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. I decided to throw in a Cassie Mint novella. I do that every now and then. So I ended up picking up Dear Diary by Cassie Mint. This is the first book in her Prickly Pear Springs series. I think this is like in her small town romance series. Um, these are all like very short novellas. This is definitely, I think, one of my least favorite Cassie Mint novellas. It's not my favorite. I think I gave it like 2.5, two stars. In high school, the hero was the heroine's teacher and she had a huge crush on him in high school. And I think she like leaves him a note, basically writes him a love letter when she's still a student. And he's like mortified and 
basically yells at her by saying like, I can't believe that you would write this for me. This is very inappropriate and basically like humiliates her. And it's a few years later, she's only 19 now. I think she was maybe like 17, 16 at that point. She works at the local library and he has to go in to bring students to the library to work on projects. And he ends up seeing her again and like, apparently everything's changed after three years. Like it just was not my favorite and I didn't really care for it all that much. Then I picked up Goddess of the Hunt by Tessa Dare. This is her first book in the Wanton Dairy Maid trilogy, which is one of her first ever series. I think these are indie published um, like before she got with Avon. This was published all the way back in 2009. This one is about Lucy and Jeremy. Lucy is the sister to like Jeremy's best friend and there's a little bit of an age difference. And growing up, Lucy always followed her brother around and all of his friends trying to join in with all the fun that they did and go on hunts and stuff like that. And she develops this big crush on and it says she's in love with one of her brother's best friends. I forget his name, but it's not Jeremy. And she's absolutely devastated when she realizes that the guy that she's supposedly in love with is gonna propose to this other girl at this house party they're all at. And so she kind of like uses Jeremy to practice certain things and like asks him to help her with stuff. And Jeremy's like, I want no part in this, um, stop. And so he tries to like stop some of her schemes to like meddle and they end up falling for each other. I surprisingly enjoyed this one much more than I did. I expected to just like not like this one. I think I ended up giving it 3.5 out of five stars. It was an enjoyable read. It was very long-winded. Some of the parts in this book just could have been taken out, honestly, or at least condensed in certain places. Like I didn't feel like uh, everything in this book was needed in this book. It felt very long. This was her like first published book, so like I get it. But this book was hot. I loved the um, hot, hot, hot factor. I loved the scale chili pepper factor in this book. Definitely one of her hottest books, but it just like went a little bit all over the place in certain aspects. Like I felt like this book was like three different books at one point. I don't really know what else to say about it. It was an enjoyable read. I enjoyed myself. I love Cassidy's writing. She's able to tell a story really well. There are just, I feel like certain things that now she knows how to condense a historical. Like she knows what to incorporate in her books now. Then I did my rereads for uh, book three and book four in the Castles Ever After series. This is When a Scott Ties the Knot and this one is Do You Want to Start a Scandal? Again, these are rereads for me. Our heroine has been writing letters to this fake man in order to escape having to go out into society because uh, she has really bad social anxiety. So she makes up this fiance that she has off at war, writing him fake letters. Um, and then years later, a man with the name that she made up pops up on her doorstep saying like, I'm ready to marry you. I love this one, one of my favorite historicals of all time, five stars. And then Do You Want to Start a Scandal is the last one in the series. It's a crossover between the Spindle Cove series and the Castles of After series. Peers from book two in the Castles of After series, this is his romance with um, Charlotte from the Spindle Cove series. Piers is a spy, so you have like a spy character in here, which I loved. I really enjoyed this one. It's a four star read for me. It's not my favorite Tessa Dare, but again, I really just enjoy her writing. Unfortunately, we have another book with disability representation or chronic illness rep that I didn't love. This is Just Go With It by Madison Wright. This book has been on my TBR for quite a while because I know it has own voices fibromyalgia representation, which was phenomenal. I loved that part of this book. But this is another case of uh, characters getting a, in a marriage of convenience in order for the heroine to be on health insurance, which again, as I said before, is something I'm not really into anymore <laughs> in romances that have chronic illness representation. It's no fault to the author at all. It's just my personal preference. I just, I don't think I'm gonna be picking up books anymore that have that like plot line in it if I know beforehand. Um, like this book like basically was the nail in the coffin for me to realize like I don't really like that. I'm just not really into the fake dating, fake marriage thing anymore. I'm not. <laughs> I feel like this book would be good for people who like the tropes or things that I don't. These two characters ended up meeting in college and they had kind of had like a will they won't they moment in college. They had a kiss um, and they thought maybe it would go somewhere but then it didn't and it's been like six years maybe since they've last like interacted and he's moving back to the town that they're from. Um, he has been internet famous since then which if you know me is something I also really don't like. It's like one of those things in books that give me the ick is reading about internet fame. <laughs> um, I don't know why. I don't like the fame trope in general, but especially internet fame. This book reminded me of um, 10 Ways to Seduce Your Fake Best Friend or something by Penny Reed, where they have to like do like TikTok challenges and stuff. It gave me the huge ick. Like I personally don't like those things. I don't know why. Like I don't want to read about that 
in a romance book. I don't, it's like one of those things I can't explain that just gives me the egg. Again, I will say I loved the chronic illness representation and I loved the caretaking scenes. Phenomenal. I loved those parts of the book, but they were few and far between compared to the parts that I didn't really care for. I gave this book 2.5 stars and I feel really bad saying that. It's hard for me because I want to rate this book higher because I love the representation, but I didn't really like anything else and I feel bad. Then I ended up reading The Wolf by J.R. Ward. This is the next book that I have to read in the Black Dagger Brotherhood universe. I really want to read Lassiter, which is like her most recent release. I want to read it so bad and I want to read all the books in between that I haven't read yet to get to Laster. I don't even know the names of these characters. Like normally in every single J.R. Ward book, you are solely focused on like one couple, but then you also get like side POVs from like past characters we love. I loved those chapters. You get V, you get Butch. Like I love seeing the gang. Like, I love that. The new couple I didn't really care about. Um, our heroine's like an undercover cop. She's a human and our hero is a wolven who is a part of this like prison camp thing she thinks that he's like doing underground drug stuff so she goes undercover he like saves her from a precarious situation and takes her to his home like it's a lot i just didn't really care i cared about like v and butch and all the other characters i love already so this was fine i gave it 3.5 stars it was it was fine. Next, we're gonna talk about my DNF really fast. And people are gonna be maybe upset because I talked about this book in my uh, July TBR. And a lot of people were very excited for me to read this book. I, I don't think I'm gonna read it. Uh, this is Shacking Up by Helena Hunting. I'm so sorry, <laughs> y'all. Um, but I got into chapter two and I couldn't stand how many slut shamey comments were made by like, the two heroine, not two heroines, sorry, the heroine and then this other side chick that's there or whatever, that's like the other girl. Like, I don't enjoy reading about slut shamey comments. So if the heroine is making slut shamey comments, what does that say about the heroine? I don't wanna read about that heroine, honestly. So um, it's a no from me. I'm sorry, I didn't really even get into the book. Maybe uh, comment down below if the slut shamey comments get like, like disappear after that point. I might read it, I don't know, honestly. And then also the hero is also saying some stuff too. So like, or like thinking stuff, you know what I mean? Like in his point of view. So like, just not my favorite thing to read about. Next I have Scarred by Emily McIntyre. This is definitely probably like my favorite new read that I've read so far this month. This is the second book in her Never After series, which are like her spin-offs of like Disney retellings or like retellings in general. I don't think it has to be Disney, but retellings basically kind of like where the villain gets the girl, you know? Um, so this is a Lion King retelling, which I love. That's so unique. And I hope we get like other like unique retellings as well from her. I love Emily McIntyre's writing. This is only the second book that I've read by her, but I love her writing. I also just really want to support her. She's going through cancer treatment right now. Um, so I just needed to support her in any way that I could. So I Pick this one up and it also just sounded really good. So again, Lion King retelling, basically where Scar gets Sarabi basically, um, but it has like nothing to do with like the Lion King plotline. Like it has like little nods here and there um, and definitely like structure points, you know what I mean? Um, but it has like the giant overall plot is not <laughs> the Lion King. Prince Tristan, who is like our Scar, who is Scar, is sick of his brother, Michael, who is the king. He's definitely not ruling their kingdom correctly and he basically wants to overthrow him, wants to get him out of there. A lot of the kingdom like fear him because of the rumors that his brother has made. And he also has like this scar on his face that his brother has like made rumors about as well. Like his brother's just like, so Michael, his brother, is arranged to marry La Lady Sarah Beatro. And when Tristan meets her, all of his other priorities go out the window. This villain of a man just becomes absolutely obsessed with this small little human creature. All he's ever wanted his entire life is to overthrow his brother and seek revenge on him. But when this woman comes, like his priorities definitely shift. I listened to this all in one day. I was like obsessed with this. I could not put it down. I wanted to know what happened. It had some twists and turns I was not expecting. And this is coming from someone who overthinks a lot. <laughs> so I think about all the twists and turns, but this one definitely surprised me at points. I loved these two characters. Like it shows that humans are not perfect and that's okay. And like you love each other because of your flaws. Like 
A plus. This was highly addictive. If you are wanting to get into darker romance, I definitely would recommend this series. It's like not too dark, but definitely I would say in the dark romance sphere, but not like dark, dark. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay. Trigger warnings for death, substance abuse, torture, SA, attempted SA, violence, blood, and suicide. Tropes. There are quite a lot. So buckle in. You have alpha hero, artistic hero. He draws and sketches. Um, you have assassin turned lover. The heroine may or may not be out to kill the hero and his family. Okay. Um, you have dark, forbidden, because she's engaged to his brother. It has great banter. The hero has a mouth on him. Tristan's got a mouth on him. Um, you have hidden identity with the hero. You can read the book to figure out why. Um, I hate everyone but you. That's definitely with the hero here. Uh, kick butt woman, no third act breakup. You have a possessive hero. It's a retelling of the Lion King. Um, it's dealing with royalty. Um, you have a scarred hero, a tatted hero, touch her and die to the max. Touch her and die. And you definitely have a villain main character. I gave this book 4.5 out of five stars. And lastly, I have a Ruby Dixon little novella. It's a part of the anthology uh, Pride Not Prejudice. It was an anthology that she and a bunch of other authors wrote in and contributed to during Pride Month. Um, and so in this one, Ruby wrote a story called When She's Shy, which is her first sapphic story. We get the point of view of our uh, heroine who is human and she is very shy. She lives on Rista 3, which is a planet where a lot of Ruby's books take place in. She has been crushing on this alien woman that comes into the space station every Thursday at the general store to like drop off goods. And she just goes into the general store and like basically stares at her and lurks at her and like shyly crushes on her. She's been doing that for weeks. <laughs> and this is the story of like them finally coming in contact for the first time and it was a really sweet and really cute i really enjoyed it i hope ruby writes more sapphic romances i would love to see more by her i know she has an ffm book i haven't read that one yet um because it's really long and i wanted to listen to the audiobook for it whenever it comes out um but i can't wait to read it, that one as well um but i ended up giving this one four stars and hopefully i will get to the other little short stories in this anthology as well anyways there you have it those are all the books that i've read so far in july let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a rainbow emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one Bye, y'all.